Sabrina's 70s comic, For the Birds. As Dilton tells his friends that a bird can eat its own weight and food every day because he finds it an interesting fact, and Jughead says he'd love to be a bird because of that, I hate that Sabrina is just staring into space with her back to all of her friends. That makes her look creepy, and so does her always having her eyes half-closed. I always hated that about the story. She's being portrayed as creepy. Jughead's at least saying that he'd appreciate being a bird, so Sabrina's a reason to think she'll be doing a good thing by turning him into one. He says that he wouldn't be here freezing. He'd be down south for the winter, smelling flowers all day. Why did he think to say orange blossoms specifically? I guess his mother mentioned them today. So he wishes he was free as a bird. And Sabrina crosses the line by deciding to make Archie and his whole gang become birds when only Jughead asks for that. I'm sure it'll be temporary, but it's still criminally reckless of Sabrina because they could have gotten killed because of that. And it's not even like she's being shown supervising them the entire time. A lot of animals want to eat birds. What if one of them got killed by a cat? At least it isn't forced that Jughead said all of this. It was in character for Dilton to give them a random interesting fact. And Jughead said a bunch of positive things about being a bird. So Sabrina could have assumed that they would appreciate all of that. So it does make sense that she did this. But it's confusing because she never does this to them. So the premise isn't forced. But the story immediately gets stupid. Because while Jughead shows awareness of his old life by saying that he's a bird now, suddenly Archie already knows that they have school. Are they regular birds or not? We can't have them not talk. That'd be a boring story. Sabrina apparently brainwashed Archie into knowing that they have school. But what's the point of having him get taught about birds by a weird-looking talking bird that she should have been explained to have magically conjured up since this is normal Earth? They're obviously going to have their memories of this erased anyways. I guess part of the spell is they'll remember everything they learned, but not remember being birds and how they found that stuff out. That should have been explained so there'd be a clear point to Sabrina doing this instead of the story becoming annoyingly forced. Archie says the world's getting smaller and they have to learn to live together with all kinds of birds. Why would this be a recent thing? Don't birds stick to flying with their own species? Other species will just attack them wanting to eat them or get rid of competition. I guess Jughead got brainwashed into not being able to question why there's a magically talking bird that somehow has pictures of foreign birds. But that's not explained either, when it should be because he said it happened and he was turned into a bird, so he knows what his life is supposed to be like. So you think he'd just go on to freak out about being turned into a bird because for all he knows, this is permanent, and he'll never get to do anything he liked again, like eat burgers. Them not freaking out about this must be all part of the spell. But I hate how much we're supposed to just assume without being told in this story. Meanwhile, the only information we're going to be told is a gigantic amount of exposition on what birds are like in real life. That's the only point of the story. There's no plot in this lecture. That's bad form for a comic like this where being educational isn't the point. It has some interesting information. But because that's not what you come to the comic for, you have to be in the mood to actually read it. I did. But a lot of readers must have skipped all of this out of boredom, because the plot came to a complete halt and revealed what its only purpose was. Sabrina gave no foreshadowing to the idea that she wanted her friends to learn stuff about birds. She's not Dilton. Her magic must have scanned Dilton's mind to get all of this exposition about them. Because no way Sabrina would know all of it. Surprisingly, the lecture's already over. After all he did was talk for two pages about how birds have different beaks and feet for a reason. That was the shortest class lecture ever. He says that some birds fly from the North Pole to the South Pole and back every year. This prompts Veronica to say that she always flies first class with her father to break. So she still remembers her human life. Again, this just makes me wish I was told that her being confident that she'll get turned back to normal and not freaking out about this was all part of the spell. I'm just confused by her behavior. He flies with her to a fancy birdhouse that Sabrina also must have zapped up. I wish I saw that. Sabrina apparently wasted time zapping up a bird to tell Archie to take his wings off his daughter when he's not the same species as Veronica. How uncharacteristically mean is Sabrina and pointless. 
I can understand her turning them into birds, that was explained, but the fact that we aren't shown that she caused all of the other unrealistic things to happen for no reason is confusing. It makes it impossible to stay invested in the story. At least the bird Mr. Lodge explains why he doesn't want Archie dating Veronica, and is going out of his way to keep them apart when he doesn't in the earlier stories I've seen. But it's for a terrible reason that comes out of nowhere. He doesn't approve of the awful rock songs that he whistles. If they were actually awful, I'd understand, but it's probably a reference to the fact that he plays a rock band called The Archies, so it's implying all rock's awful. Also, you obviously can't whistle a rock song. Why did Sabrina make this the case? I can't blame her for not wanting Archie to date Veronica. She treats him badly, but she should explain that. I want to be focusing on trying to consider why the story makes sense about just reading casually. I want to be busy thinking about the story, then, so I'd just be confused and annoyed. So this kind of story is the biggest shining proof that Sabrina's stories are a lot more fun for me to review than just read casually. Archie wants water from the brand new Pop's bird bath. Another thing that shows up out of nowhere and confuses me. Jughead asks Archie what happened, and Jughead tells him that he shouldn't fly through the park because it's full of muggers. He would only care about that from remembering what it was like to be a human. Birds won't have to worry about muggers. Archie says that he flew into a badminton game, and the players nearly killed him. And somehow Sabrina's smiling at the end after hearing that. When if she was in character, she'd be feeling guilty. She'd also be in character if she wasn't staring into space with her back to him with her eyes half closed. Which makes her look creepy. You'd think the story would have ended with her undoing the spell. And why was I supposed to think what happened to Archie was funny when I didn't get to see the slapstick against them? If they thought it was too violent to show, why did they think it would be funny to reference? I assumed he looked awful because Veronica's father beat him up because the last thing I saw was him getting told by him to leave Veronica alone. This story was just an excuse to teach the audience about various birds telling us why they have different beaks and feet from each other. That's interesting, but since it's just told to us and not taken advantage of in a plot, you have to be in the mood to actually read all of that instead of skipping it. The plot happened because Dilton told his friends some trivia about birds and Jughead wished that he was a bird because he'd like to eat his weight in food too, which justified Sabrina thinking it was a good deed to turn him into a bird. But despite Jughead listing some other positives about being a bird, it still wasn't justified that she turned all of his friends into birds too. And some people that weren't even there. Like Pop Tate and Veronica's dad. The story portrayed her as unnecessarily creepy because she kept staring into space with her back to them. And she didn't feel guilty about the fact that Archie got mistaken for a ball and nearly killed. That was out of character. Most of the story was off-puttingly confusing because it wasn't simply explained to us that Sabrina cast a spell to cause everything that was confusing about the story. Like them being totally casual about being turned into birds instead of freaking out about it. And already knowing that they have to go to bird school where a bird teacher lives. And Veronica has a bird house with a father that's way more mean to Archie than Mr. Lodge's. I can think up explanations for all of this. Sabrina did it. But when I'm casually reading the story, I won't be thinking up those explanations, I'll just be confused and annoyed instead from the story being arbitrary, and coming off as off-puttingly sloppily written. It's a shame the story is so confusing and vilifies Sabrina like it does, making her seem like someone who can't be trusted not to turn you into an animal when you could get eaten for all she knows. Because if you're in the right mood to read the educational dialogue, you will read it, because it's in the middle of a Sabrina story, not on a wiki article you'd have to go out of your way to read. But it'd be better to have a plot where the heroes encounter these birds in a story and have to take advantage of them. The information would be more memorable if, say, the characters were turned into these types of birds and had to make use of their beaks. This story just makes me ask, why? Why did the writer make a story just to give us exposition on birds? Archie's TV Laugh Out issue 19 Out of Sight only has a comedy page that I already reviewed in the 70s comic where Hilda smashed her alarm clock for waking her up. A story I already have. The description for the story on the website was so vague, Hilda's not feeling very well, that I didn't know that I already had and reviewed it. It also has a comedy page where Harvey hit a nail in his dune buggy, which I also saw in the 70s comic. 
So I wasted my money buying Loft Comics 1974 issue 167 early to get it, all because the descriptions of the stories were too vague on the website. So I didn't know I already read that story. Archie's TV Laugh Out issue 20, Double Your Pleasure. Ethel cries and says he just doesn't like her, and Sabrina asks her why she's crying when it's always about the same old thing. She bought Jughead some food to get him to pay attention to her, and when he finished eating, he ran away. Why did she expect anything different? Sabrina says that rather than him being ashamed to be seen with her, he just had to go someplace. It's clearly not true, but it makes sense of someone idealistic and optimistic to assume. She assumes that Ethel's exaggerating and goes to talk to Jughead, who hopes she doesn't want to play Cupid like other girls. I love that line because it lampshades how often she literally does play Cupid. So if he knew she was a witch, it'd be calling her out. He tells her the predictable reason he ran away from Ethel and he thinks he was being nice to her because he gave her the honor of treating him. Sabrina says that he could take her out to make her happy. She'd be disappointed that he wouldn't kiss her. So she should know the happiness won't last. She feels sorry for Ethel and she wonders what harm there could be if she conjured up another Jughead for a little while to make Ethel happy. He'd be confused if anyone told him about him going on a date with Ethel, but she could make him forget that anyways. And thankfully, she has the common sense to immediately know to make this Jughead in love with Ethel, instead of being a complete idiot and just hoping he'll make a different decision and walking away. So when Ethel and Jughead chippers get the satisfaction of seeing Jughead call Ethel's love, and kiss her hand. She's naturally confused, but still appreciates it. He says he wants to always hold her in his arms. He kisses her arm, and she suddenly tells him not to get sickening. Then Pop Tate tells her that her mother's on the phone and wants to talk to her. He won't let her go, and that naturally annoys her. And Sabrina just stands there and does nothing instead of simply pointing and magically making it so that he agrees to whatever she tells him to do. Which you'd think would be a part of any love spell. Since Ethel's been desperate for affection, it makes sense that Sabrina overdid it. She says out loud that she'd better undo the spell, and somehow Ethel doesn't question her about it. She wonders where he went, and then the impossible happens, as the real Jughead admits that he doesn't show Ethel the affection she really deserves, and he's gonna change. But he said he didn't like girls. The story ends with her saying forget it, because if she wants that much affection, she could get a big sloppy dog. This wouldn't have happened if Sabrina erased her memory of the entire experience, which was common sense to do the minute the real Jughead showed up to keep her from telling him what happened. And Sabrina says, Don't feel bad, Jug. I can't figure out anything either. At least the writing's being honest and self-aware of how dumb she is. Unlike in the animated series where you mostly feel alone in noticing how stupid she is for not using magic enough. Or worse, doing stuff as dumb as trusting her sworn enemy. The earlier comics made her dumb in a charming way. This story fortunately subverted the cliché and didn't have Sabrina use a love spell on Jughead, and instead finally thought to summon a fake Jughead who was in love with Ethel, which fills in the potential plot hole because of course she can't keep doing that, because he's so infatuated with her that he won't let her answer the phone. Why would the love spell be like that? You'd think it'd have him be willing to do anything she told him to do. If it was showing the realistic consequence of the spell, we'd see Jughead find out what happened. Or, Ethel would be disappointed the next time she'd see the real Jughead, and confused that he doesn't remember their date. So Sabrina would have to keep erasing her memory, and that would kind of make it pointless to do this for her. And I guess this won't permanently make her get over Jughead, and instead she'll forgive him. Even though that'd be good, because it finally resolved the plot thread so that I'd stop wishing Jughead would change whenever Ethel complains about it.